Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am going to show you a new product I have. Now Top Don did send me one of these chargers. This is a battery tester and charger. This is the TB6000 Pro. Um, I bought an additional one, so I have two of them. And this Dodge behind me came in with a charging system issue. The alternator cable was corroded and melted off. So I rebuilt the cable in. But both of these batteries need to be charged up before we release a vehicle. Now, I have the vehicle overnight, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate using these chargers to test the battery and then charge it and then we'll retest it again after we charge it, probably in the morning when I come back to work. Uh, but if we're working on a diesel, we do need to isolate the batteries or unhook one of them. Otherwise, especially with the smart chargers, they don't really work that well because as one's trying to charge up both batteries, the other one's sensing the voltage rising and it may shut itself off. So I'm gonna unhook one battery, we'll connect both those up, and then I'll show you guys the app on the phone. Uh, you don't have to use the app, but if you wanna use the testing features, um, those are only in the app. Um, so I'll show you that, and we can switch between both of those chargers in the app as well. So this cable goes from this battery, this big cable, straight over to the other battery. So I'm just gonna remove this positive terminal and this will basically isolate the entire, um, isolate the two batteries from themselves. I'm just gonna leave the negative hooked up. I understand that normally you unhook the negative first, but we still have the other battery connected um, to our vehicle system. So I'm not changing anything electrically by unhooking this one. We just do have to take care not to arc this one to ground because it's connected to the other battery. And even though I don't have this tester uh, connected to AC power yet, as soon as I hook it up to the battery, it will light up. And you may even be able to use the uh, testing features um, at this time as well. But we'll go ahead and get this plugged in. It says our battery's currently at 12.8. Um, we had a battery charger on this one battery but not on the other battery. So let me plug this into AC. I'll get an extension cord so I can plug in the other one and then we'll test both batteries. Our other battery is sitting at 12.4 volts. So on our phone, we're gonna click on the TB6000 Pro app and we're already connected via Bluetooth. I've already set this up ahead of time, um, connected both chargers to my phone. Now up at the screen where it says Bluetooth connected, there's a little arrow. If I click that, I can switch back and forth between the two uh, battery chargers. I'm not sure how many you can connect at one time, um, but I was happy to see that you could connect two, um, have them synced up and switch back and forth between the two. I'm just gonna stay on the one that we're on now. It says we are connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go First, I'll just show you the testing options. Um, we'll go to testing, and I don't want to do the whole test, but we're just going to go to battery test. Now, these batteries are rated for 850 cold cranking amps. Just wanted to make sure. The last one I tested was a Group 65, and it was the same rating. So here we go. We say uh, the battery test at 100% state of health. It actually tested at 926 cold cranking amps but the state of charge is only 85%. So this is 2.5. This is probably the driver's side battery. I probably should uh, you know, mark which, uh, which tester is which, so it's easier for me to identify, but I'm really connected to the same vehicle um, with two chargers. So let's go back, and I'm gonna go back to our smart charging. So it's gonna ask me the same test, or same information, regular flooded cold cranking amps, 850 so this does have options for the lithium batteries and uh, AGM so everything there is fine appointment for charging time I'm not gonna mess with that I'm just gonna go straight into our charging you can set it up to charge at a certain time of day um, charging mode is the 6 amp normal there's also options for the repair and for the supply and then a small battery I think there's even some 6 volt options but we're gonna go straight into start charging. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pre-test that battery and make sure that battery is still good before it starts charging. Um, I was struggling with these at first because I was just grabbing cores off of our core pile and they're all bad. So they would all fail and it wouldn't charge them. If the battery is too far gone and the unit detects that it's pulling too much of a load while it's trying to charge, like a shorted cell or the uh, internal capacitance or impedance is out of range, 
then it won't charge that battery. It'll just flash on the screen, bad battery. So what we can see is it says power and it's actually showing us how many watts are going into this battery. But at the top of the screen, if we click on the current dash voltage, it'll show us what our actual voltage is and what our amperage is. And if we click on the charge button all the way at the top of the screen, it'll show us what section of the charging algorithm it's in. Because what it does is it goes across these diff nine different steps depending on the state of health of that battery. If the battery is really low on voltage, it will toggle the voltage up and down and kind of pulse it to bring it back to life. And it'll go through all these different steps. And at the, at the end, se section nine, I believe is just like a float where it just kind of maintains that battery. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this one on here. It says the battery is currently at 35% level. Um, that's what I normally see it when I connect a battery up to charge. And then it'll rapidly, as it starts charging, it'll figure out that the battery capacity is higher than that and it'll jump up pretty quickly. But this will tell you how long it takes to charge it, how much power went into the battery. So I'm just gonna exit this. We're gonna switch to the other battery. Because what we can do is we can leave these charging in this mode. Uh, when we come back later, we can go back into the app and we can hit results and it'll retest that battery. and It'll compare what we had originally and it'll show us what we have now. So this other battery, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to testing first. Um, I don't need to, but just to, just to make sure that it's good before I start. It says good battery, state of health, 90%, state of charge, 100%. So it may not charge this battery because it says state of charge is 100%. And we, we saw that because it was sitting at a higher voltage. Um, we're still sitting at 12.8 volts. But we'll, we'll try it anyways. Uh, we'll go to the same, same settings. We will go to the smart charging and it will attempt to charge this battery. But since the battery is already 100% charged, it may not do that much charging and it may flash up on the screen that it's fully charged. So I think we'll let those run their course and then we will uh, we'll check back in later and retest both of them and see what results we get. Okay, let's go ahead and open the app. We're gonna view the results and when you, when you view the results, it's going to retest the battery. Sometimes there's a surface charge on the batteries that we have to take off before it can perform the battery test. If that's the case, we'll, uh, we'll either have to hook them both up and crank the vehicle to lower that surface charge off, or we'll have to turn the headlights on, or we can just hook a load up to them. Um, I have a you know brake light bulb that I can hook up to it. It just takes a few minutes that way instead of you know instantly with cranking the engine over. And you know, I'm gonna start with the, the top one that I have currently connected. Like I said before, I don't know which one is which, I need to label them. Um, but we're gonna go to smart charging. And this one says we're at 100%, so this is the passenger side battery. Let's go ahead and view the report. And this should tell us how much, how many watts it took to charge this battery, what our battery results were at the beginning, and what they are now. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, those numbers are really, really low. But remember this battery tested at 100% state of charge before we started. So we look down through here, used 0.4 watt hours to charge it. Um, charging power was zero watt amp hours. Took 12 minutes, 38 seconds to charge. Our battery voltage to start was 12.89 and then we ended up at 12.95. Standard value that we entered in ourselves was 850. Originally it tested at 810 cold cranking amps and now it's at 941. Battery life was at 91% to begin with. Now we're at 100%. And then if we wanted to, we can take a picture of this battery to store with that report. We can save that report. And let's go back and select our other battery charger connected to the other battery. So we're gonna go smart charging. And this one's at 90%, so it still says that it's not 100% charged. 12 hours and 44 minutes. Current battery voltage is at 1382. When we started, it was at 12.89. And this battery says it had 810 and now we're at 971. Are those the same numbers we had on the other one? I'm not sure if they are, but we'll, we'll go ahead and take a picture of this one.
it's possible given that these batteries are the same age, the same brand, same size, um, that our results are very similar. I'm gonna save this report. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and crank the truck with just the one battery connected. Um, that's gonna remove that, any service charge off of that battery that's there. And, you know, I haven't actually tested this uh, with this battery tester with two of these batteries connected. Some battery chargers, you know, may not have the capacity to go that high. So it may have more than 971 cold cranking amps and that's just what our peak is. But I'm gonna go ahead and you know crank it, take the surface charge off, I'll retest this battery. And then we'll connect both batteries back together and we'll use one of the testers to test it. Because I see all the time, you know, people will test their battery, the battery says 850, they get a result of 1300 cold cranking amps back and they say the battery's good. But it's not really good because you have two batteries rated at 850 connected together. But you can't test them in the same way because if you just doubled that and you went 1700 cold cranking amps, you are going to have some losses in the battery cables. Um, it, it's not a good way of testing it. So you always want to disconnect one of the batteries on a diesel whenever you're testing the batteries. So I'm going to click on view report one more time. It's going to retest that battery. So our voltage did drop down, we're at 13.12, so we took some of that surface charge off, but it started charging it again right away. Um, and our test value said 977 cold cranking amps. So higher than we were before. Um, I have a feeling that both of these batteries are still just really good batteries. They have a lot, a lot of life left in them. Now that we fixed the customer's charging system issue, more than likely uh, he won't have any issues. So now I have both batteries connected back up. All the cables are connected. I'm connected to the driver's side battery. We're gonna to go to testing options, go to battery test. And let me just see if it'll let me punch in 1700. Yeah. Voltage too high. Okay, I'm just going to uh, cycle the key. It should run the intake air heater grid, uh, which will be enough to drop the voltage. So we, we got a, a pretty good test result, but think back to when we tested them individually, they both were over 900. Connected together, we got a result of 1,670 cold cranking amps. It says our state of health is 97%. So I guess this will test up to uh, some larger capacity batteries based off of the internal resistance. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I got one of these from Top Don. I bought the other one. I like to uh, have multiples of things so I can, especially if they're fairly inexpensive, so I can, you know, test a lot of batteries. Um, I'm not just limited to, you know, one vehicle. I can get a lot of use out of it. If there's any issues, I can verify it. I just didn't get a bad unit. Um, so far, the only thing I've run into is it doesn't like to charge batteries that are bad, which can be inconvenient at times, but at the same time, it's a bad battery. You know, no amount of charging is going to fix it. Um, and it does that, you know, based on its algorithm. It tests it first. It'll try charging it if the amperage that that battery is requiring to charge is too high or whatever it may be. Um, the battery charge will just shut off and say, hey, I can't even charge this battery. We're going to stop right here. Um, you know, if we're working on batteries that are just depleted or, you know, sort of bad, but not all the way bad, you know, there is a repair mode in here that we can try to desulfate that battery. So, you know, I just kind of showed you guys the charge feature of this and the battery testing options. There are options for testing the charging system and the starter. Uh, we'll cover those in later videos. I haven't used that a whole lot yet. Um, so let me get some experience with that and I'll come out with another video showing you that. And then, you know, later down the road, um, I'll let you guys know if it's still working out for me, if everything's still good. Um, since I do have two of these, I'll probably kind of spread them around the shop so they get some more use. But at the same time, you know, it's connected to my cell phone, so I can only see the results on my cell phone. But as a basic charger, you know, they are very handy because you don't need to have your cell phone connected. Um, you can just double tap the power button once you're on the mode you want, and it'll start charging. So if you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.